Happy Monday, my beautiful and creative friends. Welcome to my channel. And you're like, what is Tiffany doing with these store-bought journals? Well, I actually wanted to do a little something-something if you are brand new to art journaling. Now, if you're not brand new to art journaling, still hang in there with me because uh, you may pick up a trick or two that will help you along the way. Now, one of the reasons that I really enjoy using handmade um, journals is because they already have something on the page. However, everyone may not feel comfortable in um, binding their own journals um, and they just may have what, what they have from the store, right? And that's okay too. So what I wanted to do is just kind of show you some tiff ways to break the page because it can be a little intimidating when you just are looking at that stark white journal. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a plain number two pencil and I'm just going to write a little love note to myself using my left hand. Not where you can read it, but just very messy and loose, which is how I roll. Yes, I do. I also wanted to make sure and you will notice that I'm not pre-gessoing or will I use gesso in this video. You may not have access to gesso, but you may have a cheap thing of white or light color paint. So I'm going in here. You could also do this with your fingers if you feel comfortable with that. And I'm just going to push that back just a little touch with a little light, um, I think that's called milk white acrylic paint. Now you could substitute any colors that you happen to have on hand. Um, but one of the things I wish I knew when I was first starting out in mixed media is you don't need all the things. Okay, let me repeat myself. You do not need all of the things, okay? So, I am going to break this second page, and today we're going to break four pages. So, I'm going to break this first page by um, collage. Collage is one of my go-to things, and if you don't have vintage papers like I do, because we all know I got a whole mess of those, but if you're just brand new, grab that stuff that comes in your junk mail. Take those, what do they call them, security envelopes that have the pattern on the um, inside Take those. Take some newspapers. Take some, huh, what else would people have? They may have, y'all may have maybe some magazines, some old magazines that are just collecting dust. There is so many things that come through our mailbox that you could totally use to break your page and start the energy. I believe the energy comes from the very first layers. And then I also love to hang stuff off the edge. Y'all know I do. Y'all know I do. And then I'm taking some masking tape, which everybody probably has in their junk drawer, is that just me? Um, well, all of my masking tape is actually in my studio now. But maybe it's some of the uh, birthday um, tissue papers. You, that could make some really cool texture. But the purpose of this is not to think about it, but just slap it down. Now, you will notice that I like to collage in clusters. So this is all in relatively one close area there that I'm putting all of the collage elements. I have learned that with my work, I do enjoy a white space and places for your eye to um, kind of rest. When I first started, I thought every square inch of the journal page had to be, um, like, it had to have something on it. And that's just not true. And now I've realized, after many years of practicing and finding what I like, that I like to have a little area of rest. Now, I am going to get out the second color that I'm using here today. And this is going to be a yellow color. And I'm really, really paying attention to my body as I smush that paint across. Now you're like, what? She's paying attention to her body. Yes, I am paying very close attention to how it feels in my gut and how I like 
smushing that paint. Because remember, art should be fun. You don't have to overthink it. Okay, so these are tips just to kind of get you loosened up and to get you flowing with the energy of the page. Now, another great way if you have a blank journal is just before you leave your workstation for the day, clean up any of the extra paint that you have and put it directly into your journal. Then guess what? Whenever you go back and you pop up um, that next page, it already has some type of color, some type of inspiration to help you get started. Now today, I'm not going to do an actual finished page. I just want to show you how to start some background, how to really ignite that fun play, and just have a good time because that should be what your journal is all about is having fun trying things out I believe that everyone should have some type of visual journal whether it's a sketchbook whether it's mixed media that calls to your heart whether you do large um, paintings a this is a great way to try out different color techniques to try out different anything you want to do you can put it on paper so um, and maybe you don't have a store-bought journal. You can grab a altered book and you can do that as well. Now, I know you probably got one of these toilet paper rolls. And this inside this jar is some instant coffee. Okay, and I'm just re reconstituting it very, very dark and rich. And I'm trying to get my little fat hand to flop in there um, because I'm going to use this as a stamp. You don't need to go out and spend a lot of money on stamps and stencils. You can use what you have in store. I actually, way back in the day, did a whole video on things that you could use in your house. Um, but this is a cool way with the instant coffee. I'm just making these marks. Now, again, I want to call out, I'm not covering every square inch of this journal page. I am just concentrating pretty much in that bottom area. And remember, this is just the background. This is just to get us going. This doesn't have to be the final piece, although I kind of like it myself. Um, I could roll with it, but I am going to show you how to um, move and groove with it. The other call out I want to have here is notice how I am taking that off of the edge. Because remember, if this is a real pattern, like say a piece of fabric or say a pattern piece that you purchased at the store like scrapbook paper, it would have it going off the edge. So I like to take my collage off the edge. I like to take my patterns off the edge. I just think it is more, I don't know, it's more interesting to me. And that's what I like about working in my journal is creating interest in things that make somebody pause and take a closer look and wonder what in the world did she do or how did that all come about. So now we have two pages. Okay, two pages that have really great starting points that could allow us to, get, I mean, really, those could be finished pages in Tiff's opinion. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm going to go back in here with my paintbrush into that really rich instant coffee because... I have talked about it many times. Hey, if you're new here, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I bring new videos and new content out every week. And I would love to help you, encourage you, and maybe give you some ideas to work in your um, journal or art. So uh, go ahead and hook a sister up with that. Thank you very much. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, one of the things that I've talked about before is having good contrast in a page. Like if a page is too dark, add white to make it pop. If a page is too light, add dark to make it pop. Typically, when you think dark, you think black. You think pain's great. You think something like that. Well, with this, this grungy um, old instant coffee, this reconstituted, is the perfect darkness to create even more interest. Now, you will notice I used my craft gun. You could also use your... Um, if you had a blow dryer or something. And I'm getting this coffee pretty... Let's see, it's dry, but it's not all the way dry. It's like semi-dry, like half and half. And then I just happen to have... <laughs> 
<laughs> I just happened to have this little uh, brown paper bag from when we went and ate the other night. And uh, they put our rolls in that. And I was like, Josh, don't throw that bag away. <laughs> and so it made its way in the studio. But when I picked it up, look what happened. Did you see that texture that was automatically created because I halfway dried it and then I squished it up and picked it up with um, the paper and guess what you can't be particular whenever you're squishing stuff around and I love how that looks I love it I love it I love it yes I do and so I'm going to use my paint rag there which is actually a old sheet that I cut apart <sighs> some days y'all I'm just I'm all about recycling and being thrifty you know what I'm saying <laughs> and so now let's go ahead and break these other two pages that we're going to have. This is going to go pretty quick because we've got it going. Our mojo is kicking. And guess what? I already have that um, toilet paper roll that has the uh, instant coffee on it. So I'm going to grab one more color. So in today's video, we are going to use a total of four colors, a number two pencil, some instant coffee, some masking tape, some collage stuff and a toilet paper roll and some instant coffee. Did I say that? Oh, probably. Anyway. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to take, it still has a little bit of instant coffee in it, but um, that's okay because remember, this is just about the background. And then I'm taking that light blue color and I'm just, just making circles. Circles, 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 circles. Texture, 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 texture. And I'm going to squirt a little water. And why not squish your hands in it? Because it's fun. And then I'm going to go in back in with that just regular number two pencil. Nothing fancy. And I'm at the very end of it. And I'm just scribbling, scribbling, scribbling. Again, listening to my gut and it telling me, ooh, I like to play. This is fun. It reminds me of like tapping into your inner kid again and going like, no judgment here. This is a judgment-free zone. I'm going to play, play, play and just have fun. Stop overcomplicating the process. Now, a lot of times I have all of these extra text giblet bits, okay? And I take and use these little scrap giblet bits and a paper, and I'm just going to glue it randomly on the background. No rhyme, no reason. I'm not looking at the words. I'm just knowing that I have got a lot of these, and I'm just going to put it. And if you notice, all of those collage bits are touching very casually. Okay, a lot of times I've done this so long now, I do things and I don't even realize I'm doing them, um, but they're touching all together. Okay, now I'm just going in with that same brush, okay, I had it sitting over there in my water so it was extra good and, and juicy and I'm just slapping that thing down. Oh my gosh, that was so fun too. This is why I always have paint, coffee, all kinds of stuff splattered all over the stuff in my studio, including my clothes. And that's because I just like to play and have fun. So I am going to go ahead and take that extra paint. And remember, this could be just a place that you use to clean up, right? Clean up that extra canvas paint that you were using or whatever um, project page that you were through. And I didn't even wash the brush. I just kept it with the coffee in it to add that extra little something, something to it. And I'm going to go ahead and halfway, I'm going to halfway dry it. And then I'm going to pick it up with the other journal. Now, a thing you may not know about me, which I know that I probably talked about it before, but I realize sometimes you don't catch every video. So, I like to work in multiple journals at once. The benefit of doing that is I hate waiting for paint to dry. <laughs> so, it keeps your energy and your mojo going. So, if you have some extra um, journals or books or 
even magazine, you can make a magazine into an art journal. So there's videos on that, I'm sure. But if you have something else, like work on multiple pages so you don't have to stop and think. And that's what I get asked a lot of times is, Tiffany, how do you not overthink the process? I just have been doing it for so long. I've learned to trust my gut. And I remind myself all the time, this is not going into a gallery. This is your journal. Like, stop putting pressure on yourself. If it's not fun, don't do it, is what I say. Mm. So now, y'all already know, uh, neon pink had to come and play. Now, this is Flea Reflex Rose by Amsterdam. It is so good. Hey, Mickelnay, if you're watching this, please bring me some when you come this way. <laughs> she has a craft store or art supply store close to her. And uh, she keeps me supplied with my goods on the reflex rose and so i'm gonna go ahead and take my fingers because it's so fun to play with it and i'm just gonna smush the two together so there you have it four pages broken down no fear anymore let's go make amazing art i thank you so much for being here this beautiful monday i hope you have a very beautiful week and again if you're not subscribed i would love it if you would please leave me a comment um, if you have anything planned, if you have a new project you're working on, and if you don't follow me on Instagram, you can find me at southerngals underscore designs. And until next time, honey, toodaloo!